Arlene Westeroff, and welcome to this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Now, today I'm going to talk about a subject that I'm actually surprised that I need to talk about at all, but we're going to talk about the courts of heaven. Is it from God or is it not? Why am I going to talk about this? Because the last week I've been in several conversations with prophetic and apostolic leaders around the world, and these people are spirit-filled. They are on the cutting edge of what God is doing, and yet they're wondering about the courts of heaven revelation. Is it from God? Is it not? And so we need to talk about this. Why? Because I really believe the courts of heaven is one of the tools that God is giving us and has released from heaven for this kingdom age we're living in. Before I do that, however, I'm just going to say, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, Arlene Westerhoff, then just take a moment now, push the subscribe button. And as you do, you can click on the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I release a new video. A second thing is, is that at the beginning of 2022, I will be starting with an online apostolic prophetic mentor group. A number of you are writing and mailing me now to say, you know, it's just, I love what you're doing, but you know, I wish I could have more. I feel stuck where I am, or I'm moving forward, but I need more clarity on things. If you are in this category, or if you just want to see more of God's kingdom manifest on the earth through your life, then this is an invitation for you. How can you get more information about how to sign up? Well, if you go to my website, arlenewesterhoff.com forward slash 2021, there you can leave your name and email address. When you do that, you'll also get a free prophetic word that'll help you to have more impact with your life in 2021 this year. But I'll also add you to my mailing list so that I can keep you up to date as things develop for this new Apostolic Prophetic Online Mentor Group. Now, before I start about courts of heaven, I'm just going to pray. Father, Lord, the cry of heaven, the cry of our hearts is may your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, as we speak, God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us. God, that you'd help us to hear what you need us to hear now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this past week, I've been in several conversations with apostolic and prophetic ministers internationally, and these people hear from God. But some of them, I notice, are starting to place question marks behind whether or not the courts of heaven revelation is from God. And to my surprise, they're not starting to put the question marks there because of theological things only, but also because of the behavior of some of the people who are taking this revelation forward. And so we need to talk about this. First of all, the courts of heaven revelation is based on praying with God as judge. Now, God is our Father, absolutely. Jesus, when he taught us to pray, he said, pray our Father who art in heaven. God is also our friend. We know that Jesus, the Son, is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And so both of those things are very, very true. But God is also a judge. And in Daniel 7, verses 21 to 22, we read a very special passage there. Daniel writes, I was watching, Daniel writes, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Now that's interesting. Why is God releasing the court of heaven revelation right now in the age that we're living in? It's because it's time for the saints to possess the kingdom. That's what it says in Daniel 7 verse 20, 22. However, one of the things that we see in this verse is that you know, it's just that there was a demonic entity, that small horn, and he was making war against the saints of the Most High, and he was winning until 
God came until the ancient of days as God's a father. He came and he made judgment in favor of the saints of the most high. This has everything to do with the courts of heaven. Why? Because earlier in Daniel 7, it says the courts were seated. And then the ancient of days took his seat on the throne. And in these verse, we read that he took his seat and he passed judgment. That is legal language. It is judicial language that you use in a court setting. Now, why do we need this? As I said, it's a kingdom age. It's time for the saints of God to possess the kingdom, but also because Satan doesn't fight fair. Satan is not above accusing us unjustly before God most high when it suits him. And the classic scripture for this is Job chapter 1. Now, in verses 6 and 7, and I'm going to read it because it's really, really important that we get this. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. I don't know how Satan could have gotten in there, but he did. It says, Satan came among them, and the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And so Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. And then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and who shuns evil. Now this is really, really significant. Why? Because God's proclamation about Job was that he was blameless, that he was upright, that he feared God and he shunned evil. However, Satan said to the Lord, said, does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you made a hedge around him and around his household and among, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, said Satan, and his possessions have increased in the land. What was Satan saying there? He was saying, actually, does Job fear you for nothing, Lord? You've made him prosperous. He fears you because you've made him prosperous. Job, Job was here a victim of an unjust accusation that Satan had leveled against him towards God. And throughout the book of Job, you know, there's so many, many times where there's talk of judicial language as Job is suffering, because many of us know that incident and a second one like it plunged Job into a suffering that was so bad that when his friends came to visit him and to spend time with him, they sat with him seven days on the ground, the scriptures say, and not one of them said anything because they saw how great his suffering was. And so as a result... You know, this is why we need the courts of heaven. Why? Because when we are unjustly accused by Satan before God, that we can go before God's throne of grace, but also into the courts of heaven, in heavenly places. And how do we do that? What gives us entrance? The scriptures say it's by the blood of Jesus. We are seated in heavenly places together with Christ, by the blood of Christ. And so we can go before God's throne and we can position him for justice. Now the scriptures also say, you know, that our God is a God of righteousness and justice and that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. What does that mean? That means that righteousness and justice, God thought of them. Nothing else, nobody else thought of them, only God. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Now, one of the reasons that I realize why people sometimes have problems with the court of heaven revelation is because we are used to functioning as priests in the body of Christ. For 500 plus years since the Reformation, we have functioned as priests. And the scriptures say we are a royal priesthood in Christ. However, in Zechariah 6, verse 13, in the New Living Translation of the Bible, it says, you know, and he will build his temple, 
That's Jesus. And he will serve as priest from his throne, but he will also rule as king from his throne. As a body of Christ, we have been used to functioning in our priestly role. What do priests do? Priests petition in prayer. They pray for people to God. They bring people to God in prayer. And so that's what we have been used to. However, priests petition, priests pray, but it is kings under the king of kings himself who actually legislate justice in prayer. And that is something that we have not yet been used to as a body of Christ on the earth. But Jesus is our example. I quoted Zechariah 6 verse 13. Jesus both rules as king, he serves as priest, and there's complete harmony between his two roles, the scriptures say. I remember talking to a friend of mine a little while ago, and she lives in Australia. And she's a housewife. Well, actually, yeah, she is a housewife, and she's a grandmother, but she's also an intercessor of God. And she told me, you know, Arlene, a number of years ago, a drug dealer moved into our community. And she said, almost as soon as he moved in, people started to die. Young people who bought drugs from this guy started to die. Why? Because he was lacing the drugs with things that shouldn't have been in there. And many young people had their lives ended early because of this guy. And she said, we fasted. I fasted and I prayed with my intercessory team. And she said, and nothing happened. We did this for months, she said, and nothing happened. She was functioning, of course, in her priestly role. But finally, one day, while she was praying, the Lord said to her, it's time for you to take this case to the courts of heaven. And praise God, she knew how to do this. And so she prayed. And literally, she just laid out the case before the Lord. He knew it anyway. But this was a case of unrighteousness and injustice. This man was making money off of people dying. And so as she prayed, she prayed something that she said she'll never forget. And she said, Lord Jesus, only you know if this drug dealer is ever going to give his life to Christ. But Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus, either cause him to give his life to Christ quickly, or Father, I ask that you would deal with him so that he stops selling these poisonous drugs in my neighborhood. Two weeks later, she was reading the paper and she opened it and she saw a report and it said, drug dealer found dead in his home. What had happened? Apparently, he had taken an overdose and he had died in bed. Now, as I speak, it's important for me to emphasize that she did not pray that God would kill the drug dealer. That is not what the courts of heaven is for. God is a God of righteousness and justice. Sometimes his justice looks different than we expect. All that my friend prayed was that, Lord, would you bring this guy to Christ quickly? Or Lord, would you deal with him however you see fit so that he stops selling drugs in this community? And that's what God did. Priests petition the Lord on behalf of others, but kings legislate in prayer through the king of kings. And why is God reminding us of our kingly roles? Why is he releasing the courts of heaven revelation on the earth at this time, it's because it's time for the saints to possess the kingdom, Daniel 7, 22. Now, even as I say this, you know, we have multitudes of testimonies here in this house about what God has done as people have prayed the courts of heaven. For example, one woman, she was being trained to pray the courts of heaven here in our house. And yeah, what we didn't know was this this woman had a wound on her leg for 12 years. It was open. That wound refused to heal. The doctors couldn't do anything. And up until that point, no amount of prayer was able to cause that wound to heal on her leg. And so 
just in the course of learning how to pray from the courts of heaven, you know, she had to pray under the leadership of one of the trainers, you know, a courts of heaven session. A week after the training ended, this woman emailed us to say, a miracle has happened. She said, that wound on my leg that I've had for 12 years that wouldn't close, she said, that wound is now completely healed after 12 years. That's what God does through praying from the courts of heaven. And that is why we love it. We see things happen that advance God's glory and his kingdom on the earth. However, there are some reasons why people don't, you know, really jump for joy with the courts of heaven revelation. You know what? If you are familiar with the courts of heaven, I'm just going to ask you to put a comment, you know, on uh, the chat uh, for this video. Um, yeah, just where you stand on the courts of heaven, how you see that. Because there are some justifiable reasons now why people are starting to have some questions. Number one, as the courts of heaven revelation has grown, more and more people start to teach and to train it. Many, many, many of these people are reputable and they are Bible-based. However, there are some now that are starting to teach unbiblical principles. For example, one man who teaches on the courts of heaven, you know, he was teaching that it was possible after people had died to go to the courts of heaven to petition God to release people from hell. Now, that's not on. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 says, it's given to man to die once, that's all, and then the judgment. And so some people are starting to teach some unbiblical ideas. For example, also, some are starting to speak to the spirits of those who have died. This is not part of the courts of heaven revelation. I repeat that. These things are not part of of the courts of heaven revelation. And so it's the acts of a few people who are doing unbiblical things that are starting to turn some people off of it. A second reason why some people are getting very, very concerned about it is that you have a lot of prophetic people, prophets hear me, prophetic people hear me as I say this, and in the courts of heaven we're getting a lot of revelation, however, However, some of us are starting to exalt our seer gift above the word of God, and we can never do that. I remind each one of us, and as I do, I'm even speaking to myself, you know, it's just we will have to give account for what we do here on the earth with the gifts that he gives us. And in James chapter 3, verse 1, it talks about the fact that not all of us should desire to be teachers. Why? Because teachers will be judged more strictly than the rest of us. And so what we teach has eternal value, but it has to be based on the word of God and not on purely our seer gifting. And last, presumption. When we go into the courts of heaven, we have to know our metron. Every single one of us who knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is called to you know, enter the courts of heaven for ourselves, our families, our churches, our jobs. Every single one of us is able to do that. However, when we get to entering the courts of heaven on behalf of cities, nations, continents, we have to know our metron. For example, I live in the city of Amsterdam. If I go to the city of London and have a desire to pray from the courts of heaven for that city of London, then I need to have people with me, spiritual leaders, uh, leaders of churches, but also leaders in the other sectors of society who are believers, who have the mandate to be there, because my mandate is Amsterdam. Another thing is, it's just many, many, many of us have the gift of prophecy. Actually, all of us should be functioning in it if we know Christ. But the gift of prophecy functions in the areas of encouragement, comfort, and edification. And it doesn't usually function in some of the other areas that you could think of with the courts of heaven. However, through the body and blood of Jesus, we all have been given authority to be able to pray from the courts of heaven. But we got to know our metron. 
You know, if my metron is to pray for my family and my work and, you know, my church and that kind of thing, then I'm going to get into trouble if I go to God on behalf of my city or on my nation. And so we really need to hear God clearly. However, I end with this. The fact that a few people, you know, are doing some things that are not wise should not cause us to throw out the baby with the bathwater. We are commanded to pray. Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. You know, he talks about the parable of the unrighteous judge and the woman who came back again and again and again to get justice from this unrighteous judge. The Lord says, you know, if this unrighteous judge finally knew how to give her justice, how much more your father in heaven? What was he meaning to say? that our Heavenly Father is absolutely not unrighteous. And so He will see that we get justice and we'll get it quickly when we know how to position Him from the courts of heaven in the right way. So thank you for watching. Next week, I'm going to ask you to join me. Why? Because I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the courts of heaven, but I'm also going to be doing a courts of heaven session to show you how it's done. If that's something that appeals to you, would you just type amen in the comments thing? And as I leave, I'm just going to pray for you. And I'm going to ask you just to put your hands up like this. Father, thank you, God. This is a day and a time when those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Father, this is a day and a time for the kingdom to be advanced. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I release the warrior spirit of God. Lord, the warrior spirit. Father, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord of the banner. You are the Lord of the battle. And so, Father, thank you that as we've talked today and as we speak next to you, you will go before us. And, Father, we thank you that, Lord, we can expect to see miracles as we learn more about how to pray in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Once again, you know, it's just for those of you who want to see more impact on your lives, I've written a book. It's called Impact, Prophesy, and Change the World. If you haven't already got it, it's available on Amazon. And if you order it and read it, I'd love it and really appreciate it if you leave a comment on Amazon or if you. Thanks. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week on this weekly word of prophetic encouragement.